Today, I'm taking two birds for a spin out on the Weber kettle using the rotisserie attachment. And I'm going to be using one rub, but two sauces. The Weber kettle's fired up outside, the briquette baskets are in there, the rotisserie attachment is on. Now I've just got to get these chickens on the spit and out there to start cooking. So I've got two chickens here, each about six pounds. One of them, this guy here, if you can see him, he fought a losing battle with some of his skin going through the de-feathering machine, I'm assuming. So he's gonna be partially skinless. That doesn't matter. It's gonna cook just the same as this other guy. First thing I wanna do is I wanna get them on the spit, trussed up, and then we're gonna put the rub on them. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm first gonna start by putting the spit through the end of this chicken on this side. Now before it goes all the way into this next chicken, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna put this two prong on facing the opposite direction. We're gonna bring the other two prong on going the opposite way. This may look a little weird, but this works when you're doing two chickens on this rotisserie. So now we're gonna work the four prong unit into the side of the chicken here, to the end of the chicken. We're gonna slide these other two down in here, and this one we're gonna press in. Now, it's a little tricky here. You gotta get in here, tighten this one down a little bit, but this is the main one to get tightened down. Now we're ready to slide on our second chicken. It's gonna feed him in there tightly. We're gonna put a four prong on at this end. And press in. Tighten the set screw down so it doesn't slide. All right, we have our two chickens on here. The first thing I wanna do is just sort of give it a roll and see how does it feel. Does it feel like it's lopsided? It actually feels pretty good. So now I'm gonna set this down and I'm gonna truss the legs and the wings. Trussing using the string actually is a little difficult even with those gloves on. So I'm gonna to have to do it barehanded and then wash up. There are many different ways to truss up a chicken just to keep the legs and the wings from flopping around as it's going around the rotisserie. You just do the way that works for you. I'm gonna show you what works for me. First thing I'm gonna do is go around this one leg and I'm gonna go around the leg that's right next to him. I'm gonna pull that tight. I'm gonna come across here Go around this leg twice, come back to its leg right next to it, go around that leg twice, and cinch that down. Then I'm going to lift up my rotisserie and come underneath, bring the string up on the other side here, and I'm going to tie it off. Remember, we're just keeping these legs from flopping around. Now the Weber kettle rotisserie attachment that I have doesn't require a counterweight. They used to, but they said these new units don't ship with a counterweight and don't need them. Something to do with the motor, but you still want the chickens or whatever you're putting on there to be as balanced as possible so there's not a lot of weight on one side. So you can see how those legs are now staying close to the body. Time to do the wings. The wings were just going up sort of by the elbow part tying it tight, coming over the top, go around that elbow part on the opposite side, tie it tight, and then come back across the top with any loose string and tighten it up even more. I know some people on the rotisserie will put foil around the wing tips to keep them from burning. I'm not really concerned about the wing tip. If you wanna save the wing tips and make sure they don't burn, you can do that. I usually just cut them off. Let me trim up this string we got one more set of wings to do really quick. Right around the elbow, come over the top, around that other elbow, get a good cinch on that, come back over, snug it down, trim off any excess. Let's see how we're doing. Let's give it a rotation. Nothing's flopping around. That looks good. Now, there is a chance, and I've had this happen before, you could have it on the rotisserie and something could go wrong. A leg could come loose, a wing could come loose. 
you can always stop it, tie it back up there. That's only happened to me once in dozens and dozens of rotisserie uses. It can happen. So just be prepared for it, have some extra string on hand. All right, it's time to get our rub on both of these chickens. And as I said, I'm gonna be using one rub today, but two sauces. We're gonna sauce these individually, probably after about 45 minutes to an hour when they're getting within about 20 minutes of being done. But we're gonna put some desert gold seasoning on them right now. Let's roll this over. Want to give it a good coating. Doesn't have to be really thick like a heavy duty rub. This is just to help us get a base of flavor started on here as it's going on the rotisserie. Let's flip it over to the side here. Make sure we get the legs and the wings and the sides and everything here. Let's roll it to the other side. You notice I didn't put any olive oil or anything like that on the outside. I don't always find that's necessary. Not as a binder or anything, but just some people use it to help crisp the skin up on the rotisserie. I just haven't found that to be necessary. Give this side, the breast side, another little shake. Get a good coating on here. All right, our chickens are all rubbed up. Let's get them out onto the Weber Kettle rotisserie. Okay, so the kettle temperature with the rotisserie is running at about 406 degrees right now. I wanna keep it between 350 and 400. This will moderate once we open it up, get the chickens on there and add some wood. I'm gonna be using peach wood today. So I have a foil drip sheet in the middle, briquette baskets on either side. My temperature probe is coming in right near the handle slot for the rotisserie. That gives me a good temperature that's not directly over the coals, which is not a good place for a temperature probe directly over coals. And the briquette baskets are each almost full. I will be adding charcoal to this as we go along as it burns down. But let's get the chickens on here and get some wood on there for some smoke. Let's fire this up. Our chickens are going. Some of the meat will move around a little bit until it starts to tighten up. You'll see the breasts and the thighs, the leg quarters, everything sort of shift. But as long as it's trussed up there and those legs don't go flopping around and the wings don't go flopping around, that's what we want. All right, let's add some wood to this for some nice peach smoke. Just gonna let that catch, burn for just a few seconds. And we'll put our lid on. As is obvious, there's no temperature probe in the meat, actually. I know there are some probes you can use that are wireless. I haven't heard a lot of things about them, so what I like to do with rotisserie, after 45 minutes, I come out here and I will probe it with the instant read thermometer to see what the temperature's at. Once we're at about 130 or so, maybe a little more, that's when we'll be saucing this. So probably about 45 minutes, maybe. We'll see. We'll probably check it between 30 and 45 minutes. All right, let's get our lid on and let it cook. So I'm gonna watch the temperature here for a few minutes. I have my bottom vent set to two thirds open. Top vent is wide open. I wanna see if I can get it stabilized between that 350 and 400. Okay, we seem to be stabilizing somewhere around 370-ish. That's perfect, anywhere between 350 and 400. I'll be monitoring the temperatures. I'll add charcoal if we need to. Otherwise, I'll bring you back when it's time to check these for temperature and start saucing them. Okay, we're right at about 40 minutes right now. The temperature of the kettle dropped to just below 350, so it's a perfect time to come out and check these, add some more briquettes. So let's see how we're doing. Oh, really nice color developing on these already. It's looking really good. Let's get a temperature reading off these just to see where we're at right now. They're not gonna be anywhere close to done. I can't imagine, but let's see. Now let's check this bird down here in the breast. We're down about 118, 119 degrees, so still have easily about 15 degrees to go before we sauce these, so let's keep them going. Let's put a couple more briquettes on. Put a few briquettes on each side. Let's get our lid back on. Our temp is starting to come back up after the lid being off. I think I'm gonna check these again in about 15 minutes, and I think we'll be pretty close to that temperature where we wanna sauce these. I'll bring you back. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's see how we're doing. Beautiful color on them. Let's check our temperature. Let's check down in this breast. Looking good, right around 130. That's what I want. 
So we're gonna sauce these now, but the way we're gonna sauce them is, I'm gonna take it off of here to sauce them because I wanna get a good coating on here. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that. You gotta have good gloves, remember. Okay, so we have our two chickens here. One of them is gonna be sauced with one sauce and another with a different sauce. First one is gonna get a nice teriyaki glaze here. And that's gonna be the one closest to the motor. So I remember, I wanna brush that around here, all over. We're actually gonna turn this guy so we can get some of that teriyaki glaze on the back too. Really good coating. Then we're gonna glaze the back of our other one. This is with a chipotle agave barbecue sauce. It's basically a chipotle barbecue sauce mixed with some agave syrup. It's got some sweet and it's got some heat. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna turn this guy over, get our front side here. Nice coating. Now it's time to get them back on the rotisserie. Get a few drips here, but that's all right. You can see how the chickens just baste themselves as they turn. All right, we're gonna get the lid back on, let these keep cooking. I'm gonna check them again in about 20 minutes. <laughs> all right, it's time to give these a check. I did a, a check and added another 15 minutes, so I think we're at a total cook time now of about an hour and 15 minutes or an hour and 30 minutes. Could be either one. <laughs> I'm not sure actually, but really it's the temperature that's gonna tell us if we're done. Those are looking beautiful. Let's get some temperatures here. Looking good, 165, whoop, actually 167. Okay, good. We are good there. All right, I'm gonna get these off, get them inside. We will cut into them and have a taste of each. All right, our two birds are off the rotisserie. We have our teriyaki and our chipotle barbecue sauce bird. It's time to cut into these. Let's cut into our teriyaki first. Get a nice little slice of breast here. I think we may have a little bit of a juice -a going on as I cut into these. Yes, I can already see it coming out onto the board here. Oh, really nice. Nice and juicy. Let's put that there. That's gonna be a taster. And now into the chipotle barbecue sauce glazed chicken. Ooh, juicy too. We got two nice juicy birds. That's what I love about the rotisserie. You get such great moisture in here because those birds are spinning. They're basting themselves. They are not sitting in any one spot. And just look at that beautiful color. Beautiful slices, it's time to taste. Okay, I am going for the teriyaki first. Got good coating on that skin outside. See how we taste. Oh, so juicy. Great flavor in there. Not just on the surface with the rub and the glaze, but that peach wood is really nice with chicken. Mmm, very pleased with the teriyaki bird. Let's move over to some heat now on that chipotle barbecue sauce bird. Same thing, nice color on the outside. This is the one that had lost some of its skin in the defeathering factory accident. <laughs> so let's see. Oh, a little kick there. That's nice, I like that. Mmm. If you've got a spicy barbecue sauce like that and you're not sure you want all that heat, adding in something sweet like that agave syrup or some maple syrup or some honey, really cuts it down a little bit, but doesn't take away all the heat and that flavor. Mmm. Now, doing rotisserie chicken does take a little extra work. You saw it there, you gotta put it on the spit, arrange everything, tie the legs, tie the wings, watch it. You can't really have a temperature probe in it as it's spinning around, but the results you get are certainly worth it when you get juicy chickens like this with flavor on every square inch of the bird. All those juices, all those flavors are continually basting and turning on that bird. They don't stay in one spot. They coat the entire chicken. 
And so our total cook time on this was, I believe, right around an hour and a half. We took it off at 165 degrees internal, which is standard for chicken. I'm not gonna cut into the thighs or legs here because, well, I'm saving those for the family, but that breast meat is awesome. And I know the thigh and leg meat's gonna be awesome too. If you guys have watched my videos, you know that that is some of my favorite meat on a chicken, that dark thigh meat. And it does especially well on the rotisserie with all that fat in there that just renders and moistens that meat even more. So if you've got a rotisserie, chickens are a great thing to do on it, obviously. Rotisseries are almost made for chickens. If you don't have a rotisserie, it's a great thing to consider. If you've got a kettle grill or even a gas grill, they have rotisserie units which hook onto many different gas grills too. Just gives you another tool in your arsenal when you're grilling or smoking, barbecuing. It allows you to take a chicken or anything else you put on there to another level and let that flavor coat it completely around the outside. Keep it moist, keep it flavorful, get it tender, just perfect. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to check out some of the other videos on my channel and consider subscribing. And if you do, click that bell for notifications. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have a great evening. I'll see you again soon.